it's Kim. Notes from my needle. Welcome to my first ever floss tube. Um, this is probably going to be the one with all the nerves and all the ums and all the filler because it's my first one. I figured I'd start with the know your needle worker tag just to kind of let you guys get to know me a little bit before I jump into what I've been working on and what I've been loving and all that other stuff. So I'm going to start with where I live. I live in Eastern Passage, Nova Scotia, Canada, which is a suburb of Halifax, which is the capital of my province. Um, the next question is what kind of work do I do? I don't currently work at the moment. I'm a stay at home mom. Um, I used to work retail part time, but I gave that up because basically props to people who work retail, but it literally sucks the soul out of your body. I just, it was not for me. Um, number three, do I have kids? Yes, I do. I have two kids. I have a boy who's 15 and he just started high school this year in grade 10. And I have a girl who is eight and she just started grade three. What hobbies do I have other than stitching? I read a lot. I love books. I'll read pretty much anything from fiction to YA to biographies to cookbooks. Um, I currently just finished um, the Home for, um, for Unwanted Girls, and it was amazing. I couldn't put it down. I literally read it in a day. I also sew. Um, I've got a sewing machine for Christmas, and I've been making project bags and, like, simple tote bags. Um, I made my daughter her pencil case for school this year. Um, I also have discovered quilting, and I'm attempting to make a quilt. I have... The piece is all cut out, I just have to piece it all together. My favorite movie right now, well, ever really, is either The Princess Bride or Labyrinth, because I have such good memories of childhood with both, and I mean Labyrinth, David Bowie, come on, it's kind of a no-brainer. What is my favorite TV show? I love Game of Thrones, um, I can't wait until the spring when the new season comes out. I'm kind of sad it's the final season, but I don't really think there's much farther they can go with it. It's basically like watching a movie every week. I love The Walking Dead, and I recently discovered Parks and Rec on Amazon Prime, and I'm, I'm dying. It's hilarious. Uh, what is my favorite book? My favorite book is The Hobbit. Hands down, I could go back and reread that book over and over and over again and never get sick of it, ever. My favorite music is pop. I listen to stuff from all genres, but I mostly listen to pop because that's what the kids like in the car. So it's basically something we all can agree on. And the last one is, what is one word to describe me? I would say it's outgoing. I can pretty much start a conversation with anyone at any time, in any place, about anything. If you see me looking down a lot, it's because I, I wrote some notes just to kind of refer to, or if my eyes seem like they're shifty, I'm kind of not sure where exactly to look. I'm looking at the phone because that's what I'm recording on, but I don't know. I'll figure it out if I keep doing this. <laughs> so I guess I'm going to start with my whips because that's the easiest to get at. So the first whip that I have is this one. It's really wrinkly, sorry. It's Canadian Beauty by Joan Elliott. I dyed the fabric myself. I'm pretty happy with it. It's Ada. I think it is... It's either 14 count or 16 count. I don't remember. But yeah, so we have that one. I have another Joan Elliott. This is a magical butterfly. It was from an issue of World of Cross Stitching. Um, I'm pretty much almost finished with this. I just have the beading left to do. It's, I'm actually embarrassed to say it's been sitting like this for, I want to say, the better part of a year because I've discovered that I hate beading. I hate it. I despise it. It's tedious. I mean, the payoff is beautiful because, I mean, look. Look here. It's, like, it's very pretty, but it's just so tedious. I really just need to buckle down and get it done. Um, this is on a fabric... Um, fabrics by Steph um, but I cannot remember for the life of me which fabric it is 
Next, I have another Joan Elliott. Can you sense a the theme? And this is from my daughter. It's the Magical Unicorn, also from an issue of, I think, World of Cross Stitch Magazine. Um, it's on fabric that I dyed myself. It's Ada. I'm pretty sure it's 14 count. Um, but yeah, this one's going pretty good. I had to take a break for it, from it for a little bit because this front leg, I had to unpick and redo like four times to get it to match up and it went in a timeout because I got frustrated with it. And I mean, ever since I discovered floss tube, which is literally probably only maybe four or five months ago, all the patterns that I had stitched prior to that point had all been from World of Cross Stitch Magazine, Cross Stitch Crazy. Um, I didn't realize the plethora of cross stitch on Etsy and the nearest LNS to me is over two hours away in the next province over. So I don't get there often or really ever because it's it's a it's a drive and I really don't want to drive two and a half hours and then two and a half hours back because it's basically my whole day and the last whip I'm working on right now I just got to get it out of my project bag and I know I probably shouldn't keep my whips on the cue snaps when I'm not working on them but I'm lazy and ain't nobody got time for that is the Haunted Mansion Sal by Tiny Modernist I'm really loving this um I don't stitch nearly as fast as everybody else because there's two rooms other than this one that have been released that I haven't done yet. But the top of this house, like this moon and this roof and everything, took me way longer than I anticipated. So I'm kind of behind. All right, so I think next I'm going to do haul. And this will probably be the largest haul you will ever see because it's my first floss tube ever. So I'm kind of combining months and months and months of stuff that I'm kind of I've saved up. So the first thing I have is I watch Pretty Southern here on YouTube, Linda Jo, and she did a tour of um, Acorns and Threads, and this Lizzie Kate series of Six Fat Men was done all in one, and it'll look like that on the back. And it was really cool, so I had to buy it. So to go with that, I went and bought just a piece of um, Charles Craft Even Weave in 28 count. And I'm going to tea dye it or coffee dye it, I think, um, using the tutorial that Priscilla and Chelsea put out because it seems like it worked really well and I think it'll go really well with that pattern. Um, the next thing that I got is I ordered this from a needle shop in Calgary, Alberta. It's a Mill Hill kit. I've never done a Mill Hill kit before and I wanted to give it a go so I figured this one would be cute and I really like snowmen so I thought I'd go with that. Um, when we went camping in July and when we went camping we did go to New Brunswick which is the next province over so I made a point to stop at the LNS so that I could actually go into a brick and mortar shop, which I haven't been able to do in easily 10 years because there was one here in Halifax, but it closed years ago. So I picked up a couple of patterns there. I got um, this Block Party Men from Hands On Design. I really like this. I'm excited to start doing this. It has specialty stitches on it that I've never done before, the Smyrna Crosses, and I've never ever done those before. So I'm really excited to attempt that. I bought some fabric while I was there to do it on. It calls for Dusty Miller Linen, but they didn't have that. So the lady helped me pick out this. It's kind of like a, a really light sagey green, but I think I'm going to have to wash the fabric because I just noticed when I took it out of the project bag that it's got a stain on it, and I don't know where that came from. Um, and I did buy all the fancy floss. I've never used fancy floss before because DMC is just so easy to get for me here, either at my fabric store or at Michael's. So I did buy like a lot of the Weeks Dye Works and the gas to go with it. And I've just been keeping it all, it's all kitted up, ready to go. I just don't want to start another whip until I get at least one of my other ones completed or, you know, maybe I'll use this once I get a little bit of it done as maybe my travel project because it's smaller. Um, I mean, the hoop and everything fits in the project bag that I made for it because I don't really like to stitch in hand because I just, I don't, I just don't like to do it. 
Um, and I made this project bag for it. I had this fabric that I thought was perfect, so I made this to just keep everything in. And the next thing I got at that needle workshop is I got two Country Cottage Needleworks, the Welcome to the Forest. I only liked these two. I don't want to do the whole series, so I got the Raccoon and the Owl. And I got the deer because he's just so cute. And I thought that these would make great little Christmas ornaments to add to my Christmas tree. Um, I have ordered the the Little House Needleworks uh, Farmhouse Christmas. And I'm going to do all those and eventually get them on my tree. I don't know if I'll have them all done for this Christmas, but I'd like to try. Um, I'm also a member of a group on Facebook that's specifically for Canadian cross-stitchers to buy and sell um, fabric or patterns or anything like that or like random acts of kindness. Just basically anything that you might have in your stash that, hey, I'm never going to get to this. Somebody else might as well get it. So I picked up um, Little House Needleworks Cardinal Winter. It's so cute. I just love this and I like I don't know there's just something about the little cardinals that grabbed me I just really liked it it was really sweet looking um, and I also picked this one up from a different person the snow one from Country Cottage Needleworks it's super cute and the same person that I got the snow pattern from was selling a bunch of like even weaves and stuff like scrap pieces that would be good for ornaments um, pieces that she stitched a little bit on um, I bought it because I mean I'm just gonna rip the stitching out and repurpose the piece so and I mean I some of these are really large really pretty pieces um, this I think is a, is a Zweigart piece um, look how pretty that is I really like that and I mean she stitched on it but I'm just gonna rip it out and it'll be fine and there's a small piece of the same fabric which would be perfect for like a couple of little ornaments um, this like seafoam green like I love this this is 28 count say jade lugana she obviously, it was a bigger piece but she cut it off and I mean that's gorgeous that's gorgeous and the best part it was under $20 for all of this which is amazing because trying to get some of the hand dyed stuff here in Canada with the US exchange and customs and duties and all that other stuff it's ridiculous there's another small piece it's really nice and this like look how big this is like I could get something pretty big on that if I wanted to and she literally only stitched a line in that I can pick out same with this like look how big this piece is and this is gorgeous I don't know if that's showing up or not but it's brown and it's got some like sea foamy green running through it and she literally stitched two lines of stitching into it it's gorgeous absolutely gorgeous i'm super i was super stoked when i opened the parcel because these fabrics are all really nice like this one feels amazing like this feels like something you would make clothing out of that's how nice it feels and then this last piece too like i think it's that same jade but look how pretty that is and she literally only just stitched that little bit in and I'll just pull it all out and use it for something else. Or if I don't have a big project to put on it, I'll just cut the stitching off and make little pieces and use it for whatever. But, you know, I couldn't pass it up. It was such a great deal. Um, the next thing I have... Oh, wait, no, I still have some haul. Sorry. Um, this is fabric haul. I think I'm going to make... Um, a couple of project bags and I was at the fabric store for something else and I saw this and I couldn't let it go I mean come on it's mousse holding maple syrup like how can you say and they're all dressed like little lumberjacks I don't think you could get any more Canadian than this fabric I really don't think you can it's super cute I just couldn't leave it and I picked up this Halloween one I'm not I think I'm gonna make project bag out of it um, I just thought it was really interesting because it's not typical like cutesy Halloween. It's like, I just like it. It's, it's very neat. Like it reminds me of stuff that would have been printed on, I don't know, like flower sacks maybe? Except I'm not really sure what these wrestling or dancing frogs are doing, but you know, it is what it is. But yeah, 
that was super cute. And it was on sale. So, I mean, I'm not a girl to turn down a deal. As my husband will tell you. <laughs> and then this is the last piece of fabric I got. It's a home decor fabric. But the print was just so pretty that I couldn't leave it. And it was on sale. I think I paid... I think it was three dollars for a half a meter and i'm going to attempt to make um a little mini backpack out of it to kind of use as a purse i bought all kinds of interfacing and stuff to do with it so there's that and that's it for haul um i'm going to show you some finishes now uh i have this that i did for my daughter it's a joan elliott alphabet and it's super sweet and I really liked doing it. I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna finish it off yet. Um, I was gonna maybe make a mini pillow out of it and make it a key tag for her backpack, but I have a feeling it would get destroyed probably going to and from school. So if any of you have any ideas, leave them in the comments below because I would appreciate it because it's fairly small. I wanna say it's maybe like, I don't know, four by four inches, maybe, maybe a little bit less. And then this next one I finished is a frosted pumpkin stitchery and it's meant to be a scissor fob. I love this so much. Um, the fabric I dyed myself, it was um, just a random piece of even weave I found and it was that purple color and I added the orange and the blackish gray onto it. But this stitched up really quick and I really love how it turned out. It's super cute. And let's see, my next one is a Good Morning Maui. And I stitched this for my son because he loves the Avengers. So, oh, a piece of fluff on there. So I stitched that for my son. I This stitched up really fast too, I love it. I'm going to make this into a cushion. I bought a pillow form, like a rectangular shaped pillow form for it at the fabric store. Um, because I thought I had Avengers fabric and turns out I don't it's Super Mario fabric which I have zero use for so I'm gonna have to order him some fabric and then the last one is this Stitchrobia piece that I really really like um, it's meant to have like shooting stars and stuff all over it but when I started putting some of that in I found it just made it look too cluttered and I really didn't like it at all so I bought some of these star sequins from Michaels and I think I'm gonna pull all the silver ones out and just like randomly scatter them around and I have a piece of foam board that I'm gonna mount it on and then I'm gonna get a larger piece and maybe find a fabric with stars printed on it maybe something with a metallic to go in behind it I liked this piece um, there are errors in this piece because I miscounted in a couple of spots, but I just went with it because I'm not. It was just too much to pick out, and I was like, nope, not doing it. I'm just going to finish it. And I mean, you can't really tell. I can tell because I know where the errors are, but you can't really tell if you don't know, which is fine. Uh, it was my first time using DMC light effects because there's some all in here. I hate them, they're so bad. Um, but before I discovered floss tube, I didn't realize that, hey, I can just swap it out for whatever I like. So the next time I need to do a metallic and it calls for DMC light effects, I'm just going to go with some petite treasure bit braid because it's just way easier to work with. And then uh, the last thing I kind of wanted to show off a little bit was a couple of project bags that I had made. Um, this one is about a nine by nine. And I found this fabric at Walmart in the fat quarters and it was just too cute to leave. So I made that little project bag. And then I found this fabric and it's Day of the Dead Kitties and it's super cute. And this is a bit bigger. I wanna say this is maybe 12 by 12. But yeah, and currently what I keep in here is the Lizzie Kate Boo Club bell pull. Well, I mean, you can make it as a bell pull, but whatever, you do what you want. And I haven't started that yet, but I just keep the patterns in there. And I don't have any FFOs, because I was going to finish off that pillow for my son until I realized I didn't have the right fabric to go around the edges. Um, My best new thing is definitely Etsy. The amount of patterns and cross-stitch and just 
all kinds of goodness on Etsy is unreal because up until a few months ago like I would have never even thought to go looking on Etsy for any of these things until I discovered floss tube so it's really been eye-opening and fun for me maybe not so fun on my wallet but <laughs> it is what it is there's just so many things that I've favorited and that just so many different things that have caught my eye that I'm like I really want to stitch that it's super cool and to know that I'm not just stuck with commercial patterns or patterns that are in magazines is just absolutely fantastic um and the last thing I want to touch on is just people I watch that I love that you guys should watch and love too. Um, I love Vana the Twisted Stitcher. My finishing game is going to be so on point just from watching Vana and the fact that that's what she does for a living and she's taken time to actually show us how to do it without having to send it for her like is amazing to me. Like just the things that that woman can do with finishing and cross stitch like she boggles my mind. She's fantastic. I love her. Um, Bendy Stitchy, Michelle Garrett, she just makes my heart sing. She's so happy and she just is so kind in all her videos all the time and I just love watching her and right now she's doing uh, fundraising for an Alzheimer's walk and she has an Instagram, Bendy Stitchy D Stash, where a lot of the things that she's posting on there right now, all of the money is going to Alzheimer's, which is a fantastic cause, because if you know anybody that's ever suffered from Alzheimer's, like you know how absolutely devastating it is for both like the person suffering from it and their family members. So you should definitely take a minute to go and watch some of her videos and just even if you don't, you can't donate to Alzheimer's or anything like that, just watching her videos will make your heart happy. I could listen to her all day long. Um, I also love Julie, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World. Some of the things that she stitches and the, especially what she did around Stitch Mania where she did like 50 starts instead of just the 18, like, I don't know how she keeps all these whips straight, but I mean, girl is giving it, living her best life out there in Colorado and it's fantastic. I love her videos. And the last person I wanna mention is Christine Stitch All The Things. Christine is great. I love watching what she stitches. She's, especially um, her quilting series, The Quilting 101, has actually given me the confidence to attempt to piece a quilt and attempt to actually quilt it myself. Um, I've watched other YouTubers that are quilters, um, specifically like the Midnight Quilt Show, and while I love everything that she does, and it looks easy when she does it, like it's still pretty overwhelming when you're trying to figure out how to piece together, for example, half square triangles for the first time to make something gorgeous, and the way that Christine approached her Quilting 101 course, it was just so fantastic and so confidence building for a beginner that I, I can't recommend her enough. And just watching her vlogs and watching her just makes me happy. Anyway, that's all I have. Uh, thank you so much for watching and hopefully my next video won't have as many ums or fillers in it. And I hope to see you all soon. I might try to do one once a week or maybe a couple of times a month. I haven't really decided yet. It really depends on how much time I have and what I get done because obviously if I don't have anything to show you, there's no point to sit down and make a video. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Have a great day and see you all later. Bye.